Hello guys, welcome back. So today we'll be starting with a new topic that is nuclei of hypothalamus and ventricles of brain. So let's start with nuclei of hypothalamus first. I've already explained you that hypothalamus is present or it is a part of diencephalon, right? So in this video, I'll be telling you about the four main nuclei of hypothalamus, starting the first one with the supraoptic nucleus. First of all, you must know that hypothalamus produces two hormones. I am putting the strain on the producing word okay so you should remember that hypothalamus produces two hormones one is antidiuretic hormone the second is oxytocin so the supraoptic nucleus this produces vasopressin it produces vasopressin now this vasopressin is also known as antidiuretic hormone okay now in short form we can write it as adh this hormone it retains water into the body okay retains h2o into the body but how so the mechanism it tells or commands the aqua protein to reabsorb water in the collecting duct or collecting tubules in the collecting duct or collecting tubules in the kidney Okay, so in the kidney we have nephron, right? Well, we, we will be doing the organs part. I'll be explaining you this over there completely, whole kidney, how the mechanism of urine formation is done. So, the, uh, what is what it is basically doing? It is decreasing the diuresis. Uresis you can remember as urine, okay? So, if it is retaining the water, it will decrease the urine output, right? So, it decreases the diuresis. Now, coming to the second nuclei, the second nuclei is paraventricular nuclei. It is paraventricular nuclei this paraventricular nuclei will produce the second hormone first hormone we have already started right antidiuretic hormone now the second hormone which is produced by hypothalamus is oxytocin also known as what love hormone now this oxytocin it helps during parturition right this oxytocin helps during parturition how first of all it works by positive feedback mechanism positive feedback mechanism what happens during parturition is in the uterus smooth muscle contracts right smooth muscles will contract it will then signal more the hypothalamus to produce more oxytocin so oxytocin will increase so more the contraction more the oxytocin this is the positive feedback mechanism okay more the contraction is equals to more the oxytocin understood so this was about paraventricular nuclei, the second nuclei done. The third nuclei is ventromedial nuclei. What is the name? Ventromedial nuclei. And the fourth nuclei, these two nuclei work together, opposite way, okay? Or together we can say lateral nuclei. First, let's do what is ventromedial nuclei. The ventromedial nuclei is responsible for terminating the hunger. So what it does? It terminates the hunger. Okay, it gives you a sensation of fullness. It gives sensation of fullness. And this sensation of fullness is described by a word. And that word is satiety. What is the word? Satiety. So you must remember this word. Now clock is improving day by day. So they are using the improvised vocabularies. Okay, so the satiety is the word which describes the sensation of the fullness. Along with termination of hunger, it also does two more things. It controls the sexual desire. Is control over here. The increase or decrease depends. It controls thermoregulation. We all have till now studied that hypothalamus is responsible for thermoregulation in our body. But which part? Now you know that it is ventromedial nucleus. Okay. Now, if there's lesion, you must remember this. If there's a lesion to this ventromedial nucleus of hypothalamus, this will cause overeating. Because hunger will not be terminated. Then what will the person do? He will feel hungry. Right. So he will keep eating. This overeating term in Latin base is polyphagia. Okay. Now, lateral. Let's do the lateral nuclei. This lateral nuclei, it promotes hunger. So if you're feeling hungry, then which nuclei is making you feel hungry? It is the lateral nuclei. Okay. So promotes hunger until homeostasis is reached. Or you can see this homeostasis reach is said by ventromedial nuclei. So you start feeling hungry. That is because of lateral nuclei. So you eat something. When you eat, 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 then the ventromedial nuclei understands, okay, now the stomach is full. You need to stop. So it will terminate the hunger. This is how they both will work one after the another. Okay. So lateral nuclei promotes hunger until the homeostasis is reached. Okay. And if there's a lesion in this nuclei, the lateral nuclei, it will cause you rejection of food. 
the work of it was to promote hunger but if there's a lesion it will cause you rejection of food and this rejection of food can be termed as hypophagia okay now remember the term lesion if they are asking about the damage then go for this rejection of food and hypophagia you need to know what is stimulation if they are stimulating lateral nuclei then it will promote the hunger okay but if there's a lesion to lateral nuclei then there will be rejection of food so pay attention to these words that is stimulation and lesions okay so this was all about the nuclei of hypothalamus i hope this is very much clear now so now let's move on with the ventricles of brain a very important topic and a very easy one so let's start with ventricles of brain okay first first i'll be explaining you the whole ventricle mechanism from where to where what goes and stuff then I'll, at the end i'll be giving you one mnemonic to remember the flow okay first of all you must know that the ventricles are lined by ependymal cells what are they lined by ependymal cells okay and there's something called as choroid plexus which is running through with these ventricles and this structure this choroid plexus produces cf csf in the previous video itself we have done csf cerebrospinal fluid what its function was nourishment protection right and waste removal we have already done it i'm not repeating it once one more time now let's start with the ventricles okay you have two lateral ventricles i'm drawing one ventricle over here and drawing the another ventricle over here these are two lateral ventricles okay now these lateral ventricles will open into the third ventricle okay these will open into the third ventricle by a foramen this is the foramen of monroe or you can also call it also known as interventricular foramen what it is known as interventricular foramen okay and this is your third ventricle if someone asks you where is this third ventricle it is in the hypothalamus where it is in the hypothalamus and if someone asks you where are these two lateral ventricles it is in the cerebrum the bigger brain okay so you should remember 90% of csf is present over here okay now from the third ventricle again it will go to the fourth ventricle by a duct this is the fourth ventricle okay and it opens in the third ventricle opens into the fourth ventricle through a duct that is aqua duct of sylvius or we also call it as cerebral aqua duct okay till now clear two lateral ventricles which are present in the cerebrum 90% of the csf is present here which will drain into the third ventricle with by the foramen of monroe which is also known as intraventricular foramen now the third ventricle will then drain into the fourth ventricle by the aqueduct of sylvius or cerebral aqueduct now this fourth ventricle is having two roots okay this fourth ventricle is having two roots it will drain one third part through a passage and this passage is known as passage called obex okay into where is it going into spinal canal okay and from the spinal canal it will be taken by lymphatics then csf drains back to where they are draining back to the lymphatics understood now this one third part was done now this fourth ventricle will open into something that is it will open into th two things foramen of lushka l u s c h k a okay and foramen of majendi sorry foramen of majendi or majendi okay now this foramen of lushka it is also known as lateral aperture what it is known as lateral aperture and these are two in number Okay, left and one in right. Now, this foramen of majendi is also known as median aperture. It is one in number. Okay, one in number. Now, this together, this together, two third part. How much? Two third part will drain into subarachnoid space. Where will they drain into? Into subarachnoid space. now from the subarachnoid space csf will be further drained by the arachnoid granulations 
what are the arachnoid granulations now this arachnoid granulation you can also call them arachnoid villi but better to call them arachnoid granulation okay this csf is drained by arachnoid granulation this arachnoid granulation will then further drain csf into dural venous we have done this in the previous video dural venous sinuses present between the two layers of the dura mater understood now there's something important you need to know about this arachnoid granulation this arachnoid granulation works by valve mechanism it has valves so that csf flows into the venous sinuses unidirectionally and there is no backflow of the blood into the csf okay so it works by valve mechanism to prevent backflow of blood into the csf understood so this is how csf once again goes back so now i'm giving you that mnemonic which i told you in the beginning okay that is liquid one minute liquid inside the cerebrum flow around subarachnoid space understood i'm writing down l stands for lateral ventricles the csf will drain from lateral ventricles into the interventricular foramen now this interventricular foramen is also known as what we did it it is foramen of monro now this t stands for third ventricle third ventricle is where hypothalamus okay this from the third ventricle it will go to the cerebral aqueduct which is also known as aqueduct of silvius now it, from the cerebral aqueduct it will enter where the fourth ventricle now from the fourth ventricle it will go into the where it will go into the apertures we did right foramen of lechka and foramen of mesenteri they are known as apertures two lateral apertures and one median apertures then from the apertures it will be drained into the subarachnoid space and then in s stands for here sinuses that is dural venous sinuses okay so remember this liquid inside the cerebrum flow around the subarachnoid space understood so i am doing this quick revision of the ventricles ventricles they are lined by the ependymal cells okay the choroid plexus is the plexus which produces the csf in our body there are two lateral ventricles present in our cerebrum and the 90% of the csf is present here here we are learning basically the flow of the csf so the two lateral ventricles will drain into the third ventricle by a foramen that is foramen of monro or it is also known as interventricular foramen the third ventricle it is present in the hypothalamus it will drain the csf into the fourth ventricle by the aqueduct of silvius or the cerebral aqueduct now this fourth ventricle will drain some of the part into the spinal canal through a passage called as obex from the spinal spinal canal the lymphatics will be uh, sorry the csf will be drained back by the lymphatics the fourth ventricle the two third portion of the csf will be then taken up by the apertures the apertures are the foramen of lushka and foramen of mesenteri the foramen of lushka is also known as lateral apertures they are two in number one in the left and one on the right foramen of mesenteri it is also known as median aperture it is one in number these two foramen will then give the two third part of the csf and that will drain into the subarachnoid space in the subarachnoid space then the csf will be again drained by the arachnoid granulations or the villi this arachnoid granulation these works by the valve mechanism to prevent the backflow of the blood back into the cns Now, from the arachnoid granulation, the CSF will further drain into the dural venous sinuses. Understood? So, I hope everything is clear. Thank you.